All right, so I guess I'll take a minute to try to, I guess, explain AI. I haven't really fully grasped, I guess, what it could do, although I do know certain limitations that it does have that, unfortunately, I just don't know anything I can do about it. So until they decide to release an update to fix, it's mostly revolving around fans and bullet units. I feel like Vaulty or Priscilla could get away with it, but uh, Simon and uh, Dark Heart are basically screwed because they'll just spam all their phantom bullets at the very start. So I'm just going to go through my AI settings. And this is the same team that I used for Chloe. Uh, I'll probably do the same for or same explanation for my Vitz comp, although it's really kind of like the same. So for starters, we have Vaulty here. And... As you can see, I have the Force Phantom Bullet first, TA, Skill, I got all that stuff sort of here. He'll use his Defense Equip during the Boss Arts, and he'll use his Cleanse if anyone's afflicted with any status ailment. So, the reason I put the Phantom Bullet first is because if you don't, like let's say if you put it down here underneath TA, he'll never even consider using the, uh, the Phantom Bullet, or he'll only use the TA because the only th condition I have for it is 200 arch gauge so without multiple conditions I can't put multiple conditions otherwise he'll hardly use his his, his barrier trust me I, I tried I did it for like three hours trying to figure out a perfect AI setting for him so this was the best one I could think of or that's one that I can come up with so First up, we have, of course, his Phantom Bullet, and the conditions I gave it were when he was at 40% less HP, if he's used his True Arts, so his barrier is actually up, and when he has 200 Arc Gauge. So, the idea behind it was because, Volti, you can't actually, like, alternate between True Art and uh, Phantom Bullet. At least not yet. I'm hoping that they have an update where they can change that, because that would be a very useful update to have. But, uh, no, we can't do that right now. So if you actually go down here to default AI, it'll actually give you routines that, that are already like pre-made to, to, to use, basically. And I highly recommend that if you're just making or just starting an AI sort of uh, build on a unit, to start with one of these as your base. Because it already comes, like, built. So you don't have to worry about having to set up each, like, equip to match the certain equips because I, I when I first did it I tried copying this setup that I had for equip one and change it for all of them but I forgot to change this to be for uh oh, how about for this to be actually equip one equip two equip three so all of these were basically if equip one was at a hundred percent uh recovery so don't do that make sure you actually keep an eye out for that but if you use the default AI it automatically comes with that so it automatically has all of this set up for you so it's just a lot easier and a lot faster to actually like you know uh start up with some of these uh uh things already built for him so concerning my build of course like i said before there's no way to alternate between true art and phantom bullet so i designed volti to act in a way where he'll only use his phantom bullet if he's below 40 percent hp of course, this would also still mean that if he stays below 40%, he'll only use his Phantom Bullet. And he won't alternate into his True Art to activate his Taunt. Which is something you don't want. So that's where Vox and Aserpa come in. So with Vox, I had him set. Obviously, he's going to um, prioritize keeping the team healthy. And he'll only use his, his normal art to heal if Aserpa, if Emperor were under 80% HP or if Volti was under 80% HP and he'll only use his true art when he has 200 art gauge and when everyone's HP is above 50% so this basically just allows Vox to act as a sort of healer that'll heal whenever of course we need it but it'll also help to keep Volti above 40% if he ever falls below it so the way the comp worked was if Volti ever uses his phantom bullet Vox and a Serpa, who I'll bring up here, here, would heal him back up to uh, to max. Well, Serpa's is built to um to uh, wait a minute. Actually, let me check something real quick. 
All right, sorry about that. I uh, had to fix the surface thing for a second there. But uh, this was her actual routine that we used against Chloe. So, like Fox, she'll use her arts whenever herself or if Emperor fall below that 80%. Also, just to like, just a heads up, it actually shows this is based on the position of the units of your party. So, as we go back before, Volti is the first unit, Emperor is the second, Fox is the third, and Aserpa is the fourth. So this lineup represents that specific lineup on your team. So as you see here, this is meant for Emperor. Whenever his HP is 80% or less, she'll use her normal art. Or whenever herself, her HP is under 80%, she'll use her normal art. And of course, I have a set to where she'll use it again if Vaulty is 40% or less. So this keeps it so that Vaulty will use his Phantom Bullet. Vox and Aserpa are programmed to heal him above 40%. And then that will in, in turn allow Volti to not loop his Phantom Bullet and go back into his true art. So that way he can activate his Phantom Bullet while keeping up his taunt. So that he can have as much damage as is possible while also still taunting for the team. Because if he's only taunting for himself or he only has the damage res for himself, uh, yeah, everyone else dies. So Emperor was the other one. And his is basically... It's sort of the same. I did change it a little bit to where he will only use his um, magic and physical equips when his art gauge is at 200. So that way, whenever he's about to chew art, it'll use his uh, damage equips to actually give him more damage. So you can also opt in to make it 190 because I found that sometimes what it'll do is the AI will actually not even activate it if it uses its true arts too quickly so if you find that your ai is doing that you can easily just set it down to 190 or even 180 and then as soon as he reaches uh that amount of arc gauge he'll actually use um these equips and then hopefully he'll use his true art so he'll get the full buff from both of these you could just change it to just use them whenever but that just doesn't really help him do as much damage as possible like you still want to be able to maximize your equips and your damage because you want to clear it as quickly as possible so for the most part i did prioritize arts in case he himself was under 30 percent this wasn't this was not only for like the beginning phase because chloe can you know kill emperor and usurpa very very quickly but this was more set in line of if he himself wasn't doing so well. So let's say Volti was able to stay above that amount of HP. Or let's say Vox was too busy in the middle of his uh, true art. Or Usurper was also in the middle of her true art. Then Emperor would be able to just heal himself if uh, push came to shove. Which he didn't do this like at all. I think he did it like once at the start. But like he didn't really rely on this. But this is more like a, um, like a, like a safety net. Like if just in case he fell below that amount of hp but for the most part he's just using his true art so also another thing that you probably notice i never put a magia drive counter on my vox you don't have to do that the same goes for any magia drive or demonic eclipse or any sort of like transformation type of unit so you don't necessarily have to do that I just I didn't because I just felt like it was just too many commands to follow. So he and I wanted him to make sure that he prioritizes his healing. Uh, you could, of course, change it to that, or you could just make it so that he activates Maggie Drive first and then he'll prioritize uh, healing. But uh, the, for the amount of damage, as you could see, these two were taking, I didn't want to chance it. So that's what I built for him. So let me pull up the Vitz comp so I can show the uh, Miranda setup that I had. All right, so here I have the uh, comp that I use for Miranda. And so if you look at Miranda here, she actually does have a bit of, I guess, some intricate parts. So, of course, I save her uh, Divinus equips here for whenever the enemy is using an art. So whenever Vitz uses either normal art or true art, that'll use her, uh, her defense slot, which is, of course, very important. Uh, but I did actually prioritize art in case anyone fell below 40% uh, HP. This didn't proc at all, but this was, of course, just, you know, for closure, because I didn't want someone to just suddenly die before uh, Miranda could uh, uh, start taunting. 
But for the most part, as we can see here, she mostly used her true art, which was just 200 art gauge. You don't really want a tank's true art to be like restricted. You want them to start taunting and keep taunting for the most part. So you kind of just want him to or her to be set at, with as little conditions as possible for this. And uh, I did change her equip three. So what I did was because for her equip three, of course, is dignified silence. So I can't. Oh my gosh. Oh man. Like I didn't want her to use this by accident if she had her max arc gauge because that would prevent her from, of course, using a true arc. So I set it to 20 or less, so that way the idea was after she true ordered, she would actually rely on this so that it wouldn't be a detriment to her. So it worked for the, mo for the most part. She did, sometimes she didn't activate it, but however, she only ever activated it after she true ordered or at the start of the quest. So yeah, it was just a really good uh, condition to be able to put here for her. And of course, skill CT. Uh, Emperor, I actually kept his the exact same. Uh, he didn't really know art at all, but he, um, yeah, he he didn't he didn't really need a whole different sort of uh, build to him. I, you could I guess go for like a mixed arts build if you wanted to, but I I didn't want to. I wanted him to just prioritize uh, his arc gauge and his um, his damage res buff that he gives to Miranda. Now Sestina actually did do mixed arts. And something I want to point out is right here, I have the true art and arts, uh, and the true art will go on on an odd CT, and the arts would activate on an even CT. Now, if you actually go to the pre-built mixed arts, you'll see that it's reversed, right? Or wait, was it? No, 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 I'm sorry. They, I kept it the same way, so that way she would use arts first. However, uh, if you wanted her to use her true arts first, you would actually change this to an even and change this one to odd. So if you wanted, let's say you had a unit like um, like Mikey and you wanted him to use his true arts first and then alternate between his arts to get that uh, damage buff for humans, then you would change these because ordinarily it would come uh, the reverse. I wanted her to use her normal art first in order to... Um, you know, get her barrier up and start arch genning for the team. Uh, but yeah, if you wanted to just reverse it, all you have to do is just simply switch this to even and then switch this one to odd if you wanted it to be reversed. Uh, of course, I had her defense item for whenever the boss uses his arch and whenever it's 100%. And lastly, we have Lisa. I just had her focused on, um, on her true art, of course. Uh, her equip 3, I also changed it for whenever Miranda got frozen. You could change this to any unit and it still basically does the exact same thing. But uh, Miranda basically was just taunting the whole time so I just kept it as one unit. It really doesn't matter. The boat, any way or either way, it would have just activated whenever you wanted it to. Or whenever I wanted it to for this team comp. And that was basically how I did this. It was... It's very easy I guess to get confused but with the, the pre-built sort of like routines that you're able to just build off of it makes it so much easier because you already have a jump start for any sort of thing that you want to do so you just have to go into an event and just test out see what um what settings do you justice and which ones uh don't uh also to be careful about how many conditions you have because if you put a certain condition on here like uh, let's say you wanted to also use it whenever the boss uses an arts, then it doesn't matter if Miranda has met one of these conditions, she won't use her true art until she meets both of these conditions. So if you have both of these here, she'll only use her true art whenever the boss uses an arts and whenever she has 200 or more arts. So for true arts that are that this important, I would say to just have as little conditions as possible for that uh so now we'll probably discuss phantom bullets because they or some of them got done really dirty all right so since i don't have water priscilla i can only really discuss these three however water priscilla doesn't seem to be as held back as especially these two right here i feel like these two 
are probably held back the most right now with this new AI feature. So how that is, is Priscilla only has one phantom bullet. So you could actually set her up where, uh, let me take Haruto for an example. Uh, right now I have him set for his phantom bullet to activate whenever he and the second unit are at 200 arc gauge. Basically the team comp was Haruto in the first position, Mikey in the second, and then Haruto and Mako. So he has phantom bullet but only activate if he's used true art at least one or more times. And if he and Mikey were at 200 arc gauge. Uh, it is set up like this because if you don't have it set up with this many conditions he'll use a phantom bullet and then he'll keep using the phantom bullet until he runs out and that's what hurts them right now because his phantom bullet applies that debuff for how long was it like 50 seconds or was it 60 seconds yeah 60 seconds say so you could have it so at maximum you could have his phantom bullet up for like three minutes and you can't do that here or at least you can't do it consistently with the ai because they don't have a sort of like i guess timer so you can't alternate between the true art you are using two out a few times and using the phantom bullet it'll just use the phantom bullet and if the conditions are of course simple because you want them to use it more often then he'll only use um the phantom bullet so like if i move this and only save it for one ta count after he uses his true art, he'll use all three phantom bullets, like, one after the other. Which highly cuts down on the amount of damage he can do in a uh, sustained situation. So, it, it hurts a bit. Uh, I do have his equips here, set for whenever he launches, or he's at 200 arc gauge. So, he can get the most damage whenever um, he's using his true art or his phantom bullet. But, this hurts him. The fact that you can't, like you can actually do a mixed arts sort of comp but you can't do the same setup with the phantom bullet so i'm pretty sure in the future they're gonna add this but the fact that you can't right now it just it's not really that great uh simon he's the same way like you could try to add like the phantom bullet to be used but it's just he'll only use the phantom bullet and uh while his is definitely more damage oriented it's not like like how do i put it like it's not um damn what's the word it's not consistent like let's say you built him to where let me see is this the one no that's not it uh is this the one yeah, so like as you see here, this one in the instinct category, he'll use his phantom bullet when his R gauge is 200 or more, or and when the boss is at 30% or less HP. Which is kind of bad. You kind of want him to, you know, get the most out of his phantom bullet. You don't want it to just be like a finisher. But as we can also see here, he'll keep using his arts when he's in his prison seven times, when he's used seven times or less so to get the most out of it. But then let's say we remove. Uh, this restriction and let's say he'll use it whenever his equip is at 100% or is at max so after uh, dang it I lost my train of thought so he'll only use his phantom bullet when he's at 200 arc age and 100% uh, skill, skill CT for his equip 1 oh, I'm sorry equip CT for his first equip but he won't be able to do it like consistently like he won't keep up his um his arts buff here like uh, or let's say let's remove this completely and then we'll move phantom bullet down here so now he'll prioritize his arts but as soon as he prioritizes this and he's done he'll go straight into phantom bullet and just spam that and then that's it like you won't be able to like consistently travel between like true art phantom bullet or an arts of course he is more of a nuker so you could have him sort of like build him like this to where he'll just use all of his equips and then phantom bullet like as soon as he had 200 uh a 200 arc gauge but like in terms of like sustain he won't be as useful vaulty of course you can kind of get away with it with the setup that i used but again it's also not consistent 
because let's say Volti falls below 40% and he uses a Phantom Bullet. And then let's say uh, Vox and a Serpa try to heal him, but he's still taking too much damage for where he stays below 40%. He'll keep spamming his Phantom Bullet. He won't, keep, he won't go into his true art. He won't do any of that other thing. Because there's no sort of like condition where you could put like a timer in it like like right up here where it shows if he has like six or more phantom bullets loaded it should have another buff like uh like simon's where it knows whenever his sinner's prison is going to deactivate so instead of it being of course the six phantom bullets or the sinner prison it should add another sort of like condition where it's based off of how much time he has left on his taunt so that way you could like prioritize that that would be a really good sort of thing to do because right now you don't really have the option to do that so again AI is good I'm glad that they finally implemented it it does still need a few extra like tweaks in order for it to be viable I guess everywhere and on every unit but uh, for right now it's it's doing pretty good like most most of the game is able to benefit quite heavily from this AI feature. There are of course a few outlanders or outliers, but uh, for the most part, even units like Amagi Drive units, like they all are really good with this. Um, so yeah, but just please do yourself a favor and just use the one of the defaults and then just build based off of, off of that. Don't just go through the pain of having to like add each and every single like condition every single time. Because it's just, it's just time consuming. And that doesn't really make it as fun. Uh, so yeah, just make sure to keep that in mind. Uh, again, I don't have all the answers for AI. I'm still trying to get used to it myself. I don't know everything about it. I hope that soon I'll be able to. Because there are some crazy things that I've seen. Especially on the JP side. Where people have taken AI and they've just done some really crazy and insane comps. So hopefully... You know, after I have a bit, lot more experience with it, I'll be able to, you know, replicate it and tell you guys how to do it. So, yeah, this was the idiot's guide to AI, because I really don't. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest. I'd have no idea what I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, thank you for your time. Please subscribe. It helps a, a lot. And. Uh, I'll keep using AI to against bosses. I'll show how I set my units up. I'll show like the AI settings that I use to get them to act the way I want them to. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.